free for now. Back among friendly faces in Florida, Donald Trump had made sure a crowd of the faithful would be there to greet him on his return from New York, to give him some love post the indignity of his arrest. There, he'd uttered just two words, not guilty. But safely ensconced in Mar-a-Lago, Trump was back on vitriolic form, attacking the district attorney who dared bring the charges. Prosecutor Alvin Bragg of New York, <laughs> who campaigned on the fact that he would get President Trump. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Then Trump spoke of the humiliation of the moment. Indicting the 45th president. Which he insists is politically motivated. This fake case was brought only to interfere with the upcoming 2024 election, and it should be dropped immediately. Immediately. It was a confident front, but make no mistake, there was nothing about Donald Trump's trip to New York that had pleased him. From the motorcade of shame to the courthouse, to the fingerprints and formal reading of criminal charges. These images captured the glowering 45th president as prosecutors unveiled the indictment that showed 34 counts of falsifying business records, all centered around checks that were registered as legal services by the Trump organization, but the prosecution said was really money to ensure that Trump's fixer, Michael Cohen, referred to as Lawyer A, would be reimbursed for the payments that he made to Silence Woman 2, the adult film actress Stormy Daniels, who claimed she'd had an affair with Trump. The prosecutors also included Woman 1, a former Playboy model, Karen McDougal, who, they claimed, was paid off to secure her silence. 34 false statements made to cover up other crimes. These are felony crimes in New York State, no matter who you are. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. He didn't specify the other alleged crimes, yet even if he had, Trump denies the affair with Stormy Daniels and says the payments were simply to protect his family. But remember, those payments took place on the eve of the 2016 election. And yesterday's criminal charges come just as Trump is running for president again in 2024, announcing his bid from this very stage in Mar-a-Lago in November. Then as candidate Trump, now as defendant Trump, an ignominy that seems set to just empower him all the more. With a very dark cloud over our beloved country, I have no doubt, nevertheless, that we will make America great again. Thank you very much. The words of Donald Trump there and that report by Siobhan Kennedy in Florida. Well, I'm joined now by John Bolton, who served as national security advisor under President Donald Trump. John Bolton, thank you very much for coming back on our program. Do you think that this case uh, that we first heard of in the building behind me in New York is an example of American justice at work? Not, not particularly. Uh, and I speak as someone who very strongly opposes Trump getting the Republican nomination for president next year. Uh, I've looked at this case. I've looked at it from the perspective of the district attorney's allegations that this involves federal election law, something that I've worked on for uh, 50 plus years. Uh, and I can tell you, I think this case is extraordinarily weak. There may be some technical aspects of it under New York law that can stand up. But uh, I think for many Republicans, uh, unfortunately, it brings them to Donald Trump's side because they see it as a partisan political prosecutor uh, who is after Donald Trump. And uh, it's very disappointing to me, the cases this week, because it's a gift from heaven to the Democratic Party to boost Trump's strength within the Republican Party if he gets the nomination, I, I think it virtually assures a Democratic win in November of next year, and I think that would be sad for the country. So basically, you're saying this case isn't strong enough, and on those grounds, it's politically advantageous to Trump and, and also to his opponents. 
But on the other hand, you know, what, what would you say the district attorney here should have done? If, you know, if the, there's a grand jury that voted on it, they thought there was a case to answer. This is how justice works. Well, you know the saying in the United States, you can get a grand jury to indict a ham sandwich. Uh, this is a case brought by the prosecutors. Uh, the question is for a prosecutor who campaigned. And remember, in the United States, we elect most of our district attorneys and a lot of our judges at the state and, and local level. Uh, th this attorney, uh, district attorney, was elected in New York campaigning to get Donald Trump. So when you see somebody who has uh, breached the office basically with that in mind uh, and then files a complaint that's very weak, uh, it's it's not surprising that people conclude that this is more partisan politics uh, than than real law enforcement. And uh, I, I'm not happy to say that because I don't want Donald Trump to escape uh, charges that uh, that that brought against anybody else might have been legitimate. And the real issue here ultimately, of course, will be, is he convicted or if he's acquitted? If he's acquitted, mm -hmm it will feed the narrative that he was persecuted, which will just be rocket fuel to his campaign. And if he's convicted, not just on these charges, but other charges that might be coming down the pipe, he can still run for president, which to many people around the world would seem absurd. Well, the Constitution places no obstacle to that, and it's up to the voters. And really, in, in a perfect world, uh, all of these criminal cases that people talk about endlessly uh, really wouldn't be a factor. L leave it up to the voters and then let them decide. That's what uh, representative government is all about. I, I just want to beat Trump at the, at the polls uh, fair and square. There are many people who think uh, that he's a danger to the Republican Party. Do you think that Trump is a danger to American democracy? Look, I, I said in opposing his reelection in 2020, Trump had done a lot of damage to the United States. He's certainly done a lot of damage to the Republican Party, but it was all repairable. And I think it is in the process of being repaired. But if he were elected to a second term, he would do damage internationally and, and here at home that would not be repairable. And I think that remains true going forward. I think it's uh, critical for the safety of the country and the Republican Party that he not get our nomination. Mm. And John Bolton, how much do you personally regret ever having worked for him? Well, I, I don't regret having worked for the country. I've spent a lot of my career in the national security field. Being national security advisor was something even Trump himself said, this job is made for you. So what I was trying to do was help advance the country's interest and uh, try and get our policy correct. And I don't regret a minute of that. OK, John Bolton, thank you very much indeed for coming on the program.